Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Homekeepers. Come right on in, my friends. So good to be here with you today. And I just love getting your feedback. And we, we do get it. We get cards, we get letters, we get emails. And I so appreciate the interaction we can have with you this way. And so if you're a brand new viewer, just hang around. We're just people who love home and what it's all about. And we try to address any kind of a subject that deals with the home. And of course, the good health of the people living in the home is important. And for that reason, we have Deborah Ray on once a month. Uh, in the past, she's had radio and television shows. And uh, the title she's been given is the First Lady of Health. And I would have to agree with that. I've told friends, I've never asked her a question she couldn't answer. And uh, she very seldom gives an opinion. It's the latest study from the latest doctor dealing with this, that, and the other. And so there's something special when she comes in each month. Today we're going to talk about something that is probably on a lot of people's minds, especially as they age, and that's Alzheimer's disease and uh, some really exciting things that uh, she's going to bring to you today. And I think that you get a certain age, you begin to think about that type of thing. So I'm, we're so glad, so privileged to just dispense information to you and appreciate uh, your feedback on that. Now I'm going to join Stephanie. We're going to do a cauliflower and broccoli cheese bake. It's, it's a casserole and it's got eggs in it and I think it's going to taste really good when we pull it out of the oven. Before I join her, though, I again want to offer you the faith of America's presidents. I hope you're teaching your children that reading is important. And this is not a child's book by any means. But if you have teenagers, young adults and family, it's important to know a lot about our presidents. And I, from everything I've learned recently, the history of the United States has been watered down and even changed in some of our public schools. But this one, this book deals with the faith and the belief in God from our presidents from George Washington on down. Uh, I have a friend named Doug Weed. Perhaps uh, you've heard that name yourself. He's uh, quite a historian and he totally endorses this book. I think uh, it would be very interesting and important for you to have it. So it's available to you for that gift of at least $20. And you can tell by looking at it, it's quite a nice book. But for $20, uh, that takes in shipping, handling, and everything. And I think that uh, it's beneficial for us to know our history. Very, very important. If you use your credit card, it's 1-800-229-0059. And the address there is box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Hope you will order one. And when you do, of course, it helps to keep this ministry on the air. And I have joined Stephanie. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Well, since you, we were last together, you went to Tennessee. I did. It was an amazing trip. Great weather. I got to see snow when I got there. And then by the time I left, it was all gone. So it was perfect. <laughs> so it was a gift to Stephanie. Yeah. When I woke up Friday morning, it was 14 degrees. Ooh. And then when I left, my car said icy, 33 degrees. And then by the time I got home, it was almost 80. And I was like unlayering. Yeah. Yeah, so it was a great trip. It was great to see my folks. Had spaghetti. Got to see some of the station managers, which is always nice. Mm -hmm. We have two fine stations in Tennessee. Yeah. Christian Television Network, Knoxville and Nashville. Mm -hmm. So what are you fixing? Okay, so I have two tablespoons of butter. I put a small diced onion in here, and I'm just sautéing it a little mm -hmm. bit. And then I'm going to put in two tablespoons of flour. We're going to make a little roux. And I'm doing the spraying again. Yes, you're spraying the pan. You're going to just whip up those three eggs for me. Ooh. You've got two things for me to do? Yeah. So we're just making a little roux. Oh, sorry about oh, that. <laughs> we're just making a little roux. You just want to cook the flour out a little bit here. You don't yeah. want to taste the flour. Yeah, that's what I hear all of them say on the Food Network. That... Why do you think I say it? No. <laughs> Do it long enough so you don't get the flour taste. That's yeah. Yeah. So then I have a half a cup of milk. The eggs really surprised me in this. I was thinking it was more of a different bake, but this is really like an egg bake. I mean, so this is going to thicken up really quickly. I couldn't believe how fast it thickened up. Well, this, this called morning. for the Velveeta cheese, but wouldn't any kind of cheese work? Or? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just Velveeta smooth, uh -huh. very smooth, whereas. 
look at that, it thickened right up. Yep. Salt. Perfect. Okay, now throw the cheese in for me. That's eight ounces. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. No. Cheese doesn't want to get, get it's, boil in there. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to melt this up. And then we're going to just temper the eggs real quick. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a little bit of this in the eggs so that we don't have scrambled eggs. This will just take a second for this to melt. I added a little extra milk to it this morning. I think I'm going to do that again. What do you think of um, maybe a little ham or something? Oh, yeah. You could make a, a whole meal you out could, of it. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's it could definitely be your entree. Yeah. So. Okay, yeah. See, I added just a little bit more milk. Get a little smoother consistency. Mm -hmm. But you... You don't want it like runny, right? No, not runny, but you don't want it so thick that you can't stir it up. Yeah. And that's kind of where it was. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Have to. We went to an amazing flea market. I got these for a dollar. What? Oh, they're pretty. I know. I got all kinds of earrings for a dollar. I got makeup for a dollar. I was in heaven. Uh, my kind of flea market. I'm telling you. And it was not, I mean, it wasn't, it was you know, cheap makeup by standards, but it was a dollar, so I'm it's the stuff I use. I'm surprised you didn't start your Christmas shopping, or maybe you did. I was not mentally prepared for all of that. <laughs> like, I wasn't even mentally prepared for the dollar Because she stuff. is one who does the Christmas shopping really okay, early. so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of this. Good. Got it. And put it in here. I'm just going ah! to temper these eggs a little bit so we don't pour them in here and just have scrambled eggs. Can I have another whisk? Another whisk, mm -hmm. please. Okay. Is that too big? Nope, I'm good. Whatever small, you got. A smaller one. Thank you. So I'm just going to mix these in here now. You can hold. Yeah. And then that's just broccoli and cauliflower, frozen broccoli and cauliflower, mm -hmm. cauliflower thawed. I mean, it, yeah, that's what I love about it. It's so uh, easy. Truth in advertising, we couldn't find the mix that it called for, mm -hmm. so bought a, uh, a could get the broccoli, but got the fresh cauliflower, just cut it up and steamed it a little right. bit. It looks super easy. Fine. I mean, but if you can find the bag, I mean, that's it. Oh, yeah. Bag of, yeah. So it's super I do simple. notice in um, the frozen section that mm -hmm. there's so many different ways they're doing cauliflower. Well, and, there's and it's ca so that good cauliflower for you. rice now would yeah. be really good in here. Yeah. Yeah, with broccoli. I'm so you just buy mix some this all up. You pour it in the pan. Pour it in and the you pan. bake it. So let's uh -huh. see. See what it looks like. That is lovely. I'm anxious to taste it. Yeah. Because I eat lots of vegetables. Well, you could almost cut this up and make a kind of a pretty square out of it, mm -hmm. you know? But. Mm, look at that yummy. Uh huh. Glass. Yummy. Mm hmm. Put this and in. it is called. Okay. A, it's called a cauliflower broccoli oh man, cheese bake. That's good. Have Deborah You're come over. You're taking another bite. It must be. Let's just uh, let's just eat and forget what else. Mm. I would say surprisingly good. That is surprisingly mm -hmm. good. But it's cheese. I mean. It might be. A, it might be a way <laughs> to get a few vegetables in your kids. If you would like this recipe, I think you would like it, really. Information's coming up on your screen. It's absolutely free. Uh, that information will tell you where you can go get it, email, whatever, mail it to us, whatever. Be glad to take care of it. I, now, if you haven't met Deborah Ray, you're going to love her, so stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, I am delighted to welcome Be Deborah Ray back to the program, and hope you had good holidays and all that. Well, thank you. Nice to be here. Yes, uh, brand new year as we're making this program, and I uh, often think of um, how <clears throat> how the Lord designed life to have something new coming up all the time, and the Bible says His mercies are new every morning, right. not every year, but just every morning. Thank God for that. You know, uh, we mentioned, I believe the last time you were here, because you did a lot of traveling, and we missed a month or two of your being here, 
But we did mention if uh, viewers want a, an opinion or some kind of an answer about a question you have, just send them. So we, I've got a couple that we'll deal with because we want to really talk about Alzheimer's disease. Okay, I haven't heard of this. A-L-O-P-E-C-I-A. -E Alopecia, hair loss. Sometimes it can be partial, sometimes it can be complete. Mm -hmm. um, certainly devastating to, uh, to many people to deal with that because there's really, it's, it's <clears throat> not a good condition in terms of there's no pill for it. Mm -hmm. So patients are often left with, you know, learn to live with it, they take steroids. Uh, where a doctor like Dr. Young, uh, doctors who are used to getting to the root of the problem, often find out that there's something else going on with the patient. Often it's related to a fungal infection, sometimes it's yeast overgrowth, mm -hmm. and I've seen patients totally reversed. Really? You really get to, uh, yes, yes. I always remember a, a patient, she, her, she brought pictures. I mean, she had, had hair, had hair waist length hair and had lost all of it due to alopecia. Turns out that she had taken antibiotics, um, had terrible yeast overgrowth, and when she mm. rebalanced her system, the hair grew in and it was beautiful. Yeah. You know, it seems like everything goes back to um, doing the right things yes. And, yes. and not overloading with the meds. Right, uh, right. They have a place, they have a yeah. place but there's side effects associated yeah. with it. So if you can do the lifestyle first, you know, then the medication, it's wise to use that. As but do you know step. of any medication that can make your hair grow? No. Well, well there was something for guys. That yes, used to the, the minoxidil, those things. Yeah. But when you stop taking it, the hair falls out. Mm -hmm. So it can be beneficial as a mm -hmm. short-term aid, but it's not going to be the long-term fix. And the, there is good news that, boy, there are beautiful wigs today every style, and I imagine they're more, more lightweight than they used to be. Um, you could still look gorgeous. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, one more. Uh, iodine deficiency, one of our right. viewers wants to know about that. Yes, uh, because we eat differently than we did a century ago, we're finding more and more of these deficiencies, and they're actually belts in the country, the Midwest in particular, uh, that the soil is deficient with iodine and we see uh, a rapid increase in conditions like thyroid disorders. Mm -hmm. You're not getting enough iodine. So you and I probably grew up with that iodized salt, but then they demonized salt because mm -hmm. you weren't supposed to add the salt to your diet because of the blood pressure when iodine is necessary. So often you need to uh, have it measured and take it supplementally. It's easy to supplement. There is a supplement. There is a supplement, mm -hmm. but we find so many conditions Many women are diagnosed with fibrocystic breast disease, and that's related to iodine deficiency. So we need to take a look at these nutrient mm -hmm. deficiencies as what's causing the condition rather than just treat the symptom. All right, well, thank you. And if you have any questions, uh, Deborah comes on once a month, so uh, we'll try to certainly get to them. You can email them or write them to us. Uh, we'll be glad to address them. Okay, um, reversing uh, Cong, con, con, Cognitive. Say it for me. <laughs> cognitive. <laughs> cognitive. Yeah, I was right, trying right. Did it have right. a G sound or not? Uh, cognitive decline. Uh, is that another way to say Alzheimer's disease? Memory loss, dementia, Alzheimer's, yes. They're, they're all related, and there's a growing body of evidence. And this has gone back for probably four decades that we used to think you have a, a, a finite number of brain cells, and as, they start, as you start to decline, there's nothing you could do. And now we realize that's not the case at all. That's so are they brain cells that need to be replaced or, or the given body, health? Or? The body will replace them. And we certainly know that how we feed them makes a difference. And then there's toxins that cross that blood-brain barrier. There's actually bud studies now because there's a growing number of physicians that recognize that even if you have an Alzheimer's diagnosis, that's not... Not, not fatal, but not a diagnosis that there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. There are, are innovative physicians. Dr. Dale Bredesen is uh, mm -hmm. one of them um, that I uh, was made aware of. He, I love the name of the book. Yes. The title. <laughs> he and a growing number of physicians that he is training around the country the are learning that they can learn the type of Alzheimer's that you have and actually reverse it. It's, it's a multi-fold uh, you know, plan. It's not just a bullet, uh, you mm -hmm. know, magic bullet. It's not just a pill, but there is certainly hope, uh, which is just incredible. Yes, and the name of that book is The End of Alzheimer's. Right. And 
you can certainly go online and get it. The mm -hmm. doctor's name is uh, Dale Bredesen. Right. Uh, this is very exciting because this it isn't is. the only one, but is, is he kind of the one that's breaking down the barriers? And he was the one who was trained and taught uh, teachers at Stanford University in this field. And of course, his colleagues said, oh, no, no, you know, that's just not possible. Mm -hmm. And he showed them. He showed them. And now a growing number of physicians are sending their family members to him saying, oh, you know, I couldn't do this in my practice, but would you please <laughs> help my mother? Would you please? Help? Because yeah. it's not a pill. Right, right. I, re I remember, uh, and you and I have talked about my mom who lived to be 100. Yes. I've read enough books on Alzheimer's, but I, I didn't see the, just some of those symptoms that are hallmarks. Right. But she did lose her memory. Yes. Uh, she, I'm right. sure she didn't know right. who I was uh, in her final days. So there, there is a difference between what we call dementia and Alzheimer's disease? Yes, and within the diagnosis of Alzheimer's, there are different forms of Alzheimer's. And that's what Dr. Bredesen has pioneered, that even though you have that diagnosis, you're probably very different than another patient with that diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And that difference makes all all the importance when it comes to your treatment. So he has pioneered really going through genetics, uh, toxin testing, uh, inflammation, all of these factors that affect the brain health. Because for example, the brain consumes more than 50% of the fats in our diet. That's what's important for those cells in the brain because we've changed the fats in our diet. Oh, it's that like it's a really bad word. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, we demonized it, and yeah. that's not what we should be doing at all. Can you give us an overview of what he says, what he recommends? Sure, sure. And, and in fact, um, I, I was so struck by a patient brought him uh, a family member who had been to, you know, top of the field um, doctor and been given a diagnosis of Alzheimer's, and mm -hmm. they had literally done the standard test and given them the, uh, the pharmaceutical. He has a whole page from genetics to inflammation, infections. We're now knowing that there's forms of Lyme disease and forms of viruses in the herpes family that can actually cause Alzheimer's-like symptoms. And if you're not looking for the infection, you may miss that's a different form of Alzheimer's than somebody else's. Diabetes, we now know there's a type three diabetes. I've heard that. That the patients actually look like an Alzheimer's patient but we never measured what was going on with the sugar levels well, uh -huh. in their cells and is actually a type through diabetes that can be certainly treated successfully. He talks about things like hormonal status, toxin exposure, and there's actually tests now that they can measure because a lot of these toxins cross that blood-brain barrier. We never knew that before mm -hmm. and we can reverse that and the patient can get better. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's incredible to give that hope to families mm -hmm. who think, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do? You know, that's, that's full-time care, it's expensive care, and of course then there's the hopelessness of the situation. It's just incredible to know that you can be diagnosed with different forms of Alzheimer's and successfully yeah. treat it. That is, uh, I mean, that's just light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely, it's absolutely. Takes, um, it's just the breakthrough probably in all of medicine that uh, people want to see because I read a statistic somewhere that with around 300 million people in the United States that 50 million of them. 80 percent of the patients, mm -hmm. the population in this country by the time they reach of 80 will have some degree mm -hmm. of memory loss, dementia, Alzheimer's, 80 percent. Now so why is that normal? That's not normal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And Bill Gates, he's given 50 million right. to study this. God bless him. Right, yeah. right. And before you get to that diagnosis, there's certainly a growing number of people uh, in this country who recognize that because we've changed our lifestyle, because mm -hmm. we eat so differently than we did a century ago, that they're seeing frank memory loss. I don't know if you've seen it in 20-some-year-olds and 30-some-year-olds. They just don't have the memory. And you look at them when you're twice that age and say, jeepers and things like soft drinks, things like refined mm -hmm. carbohydrates, that makes a difference in how our brains function. The good news is when you identify it and make wiser lifestyle choices, again, back to scripture, it's just the basics. Uh -huh. You know, you don't want to shop the, the 
interior of the grocery store because that's where all the processed mm -hmm. foods are. Eat what God intended us for eat. Good mm -hmm. quality protein. It can be vegetable protein, you know, un fresh fruits and vegetables, good fats, um, things like avocados, olive oil. Mm -hmm. All of those make a huge difference in how our brain functions. And even patients who say, oh my goodness, you know, I thought that I was coming down with an early form of Alzheimer's can dramatically yeah. improve their brain function. Now this book, Headstrong by Dave Asprey, what basically is it about? It's about he recognized in his early 30s, he was one of those type A executives, um, you know, in the IT world. Uh -huh. So he, he worked crazy schedules with crazy pressure and all of a sudden yeah. it's like, I can't remember things. Oh my goodness, you know, this not only affects me and my family and, and me personally, but my ability to make a living. Mm -hmm. So he started to research and started to call the experts and used himself as a guinea pig and that actually has a foundation that he supports for this type of research, realizing that the standard American diet, there's a lot of people out there who are functioning less than yeah. optimally, you know, so brain-wise. Yeah, exactly. to be so young. And um, I love the approach they're taking because yeah. the, really there's a lot of scientists that are looking for that pill. Right. The only pill I know about for uh, Alzheimer's called Aricept or something like right, that. Right. And I read some side effects to it that are, and that it didn't do that well, depending on, I guess, who took you it. Know, for all the research and all the money, it's never cured anyone, yeah. never really slowed down the process. And so why that's all physicians have to offer, there is another way. Mm -hmm. And you know, finding a physician yeah. that will work with you to diagnose what form do you have and you know, what caused it and what can be done about it. We used to think, Nothing now this is do. really yeah. this is really exciting because I think this is happening in other uh, areas of uh, science and and disease that uh, think well maybe maybe a pill isn't the route exactly. to go. Exactly. Do you have one more book you want to yes, talk about? Yes, I just had the opportunity to spend some time well, with Dr. Block at his center. <laughs> oh yeah, life over cancer. Yes, and he has an amazing approach with uh, with cancer patients where he has discovered that if you were in Europe, for example. Um, you can test patients the genetic map of their tumor cells and they're finding that they can increase the effectiveness of treatment. Wow. 200% reduce the toxicity by 85% because if the patient does need chemo, they might need it at 8 p.m. at night as opposed no to kidding. coming in to a doctor's office when they're open. He's finding What patients. difference would the hour of the day make? that our bodies are fearfully and wonderfully made. Isn't that oh amazing? Oh my goodness. And that how that patient responds, they can actually map and know that your tumor cells are best served when they're treated at a particular time of day. And just think about it, increasing the effectiveness of the treatment 200% so you can give less drug with less toxicity and the patient can get better faster. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I've never been to med school. I'm yeah. sure you've already figured that out. But it has bothered me for a long time when I would give it some thought. Is that there is just a okay, one size you have breast itself. cancer, so right. this is the protocol. We're right. gonna take it off, right. we're gonna give you this much right. chemo, this much radiation. It's like I wonder if they even take into consideration how much they weigh. No. No. There are so many don't. factors. Right, right. And as I shared with you, uh, my husband's sister, my sister-in-law, is, is going through breast cancer treatment right now. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the young power shake made a huge difference because her physician, unfortunately, just said, eat what you can tolerate, Barbara. You know, just keep those calories coming in. Even if it's sugar, you know, that's what you have to do. And when she started on the, uh, the fruit of the spirit and the, and the protein and, Boy, that's and the good news. natural oils, she's doing just wonderfully better. Yes, yeah. and that... Fruit of the Spirit and also the Young Shake uh, we offer on this program. Okay, there's, um, I made a few notes here, and this is uh, to, you know, if, if you're diagnosed with Alzheimer's or you feel like maybe you're losing it a little bit, things that you can do. And one of them is just go walk or something for 20 minutes. Right, right. I mean, this is not rocket science. Uh, coffee so yes. can stimulate mm -hmm. the it's brain. It's an antioxidant. It's a dark colored bean. 
Um, you know, the, the darker How the How much bean, dark chocolate can I have? <laughs> they say some every day is a good idea, a very good idea. For some, your, though, I could, I could eat uh, <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> All in moderation. Also spinach? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They're finding that, that patients who've actually had strokes, when they're treated with dark green leafy vegetables, um, some of them from the sea, um, mm -hmm. things like spirulina, their brains actually improve mm -hmm. dramatically just because of those dark green leafy vegetables. Yeah, you know what I do a lot at night? I put just a little tiny bit of pasta in to give that uh, feeling of substance. Uh -huh. And a lot of uh, cut up squash, cauliflower, um, spinach, and I put it in the last two minutes in, mm -hmm. into the pasta and then drain it. And uh, you can eat an awful lot of spinach that way because it'll wilt right down. Right. And frozen uh, chopped spinach, frozen chopped kale mm -hmm. in your shake in the morning. Mm -hmm. Great way to get it in. Nobody mm -hmm. knows it's there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, don't smoke. Eat plant food and stay social. Yes. Community. And I want to ask yes. you about brain games because I buy those books uh, with crossword puzzles and stuff. And when I'm watching TV, I'll do those and connect this and the other. There are studies on both sides of the fence, but you know, I have health heroes. Uh, for example, Jack LaLanne, physicians that I know who have practiced until age 99, who kept their brains active, mm -hmm. doing what they loved, you know, God's will in their life, and it made all the difference in the world. I want to be like that when I'm 90. Yeah, are there, are there some negatives about that? I, mean, I would no, think trying no to work downside. a crossword puzzle would right. be good right. for no you. No downside. Uh, and don't be de um, deficient in, in vital nutrients. Right. Um, and it's not hard to, you know, find out what those are. In fact, I think most people know the vital ones. We're almost out of time. I think we're going to have to do, you know, you every two weeks instead of <laughs> once a month. Uh, but, oh, I'm, thr I'm thrilled with the information you brought us today. So interesting. And so exciting. The truth is what you tell us basically year after year after year affects every disease. Yes. For the, the same better. Plan. It's uh -huh. the same plan. Uh-huh. Yes. And it comes right out of the Bible. Um, in Genesis, when he created uh, male and female, it said, in this, growing here in this garden, these trees and stuff, this shall be food for thee. And God hasn't changed. He hasn't sent us anything any different. So it'd uh, be a good idea to look, see where it might be a good idea for you to change what you're doing. We are out of time, though, but please join me next time remembering there's no higher caller than calling than that of a homekeeper. <laughs> If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.